Hello, I'm Umberta Genta and welcome to another episode of Intondo's podcast. The podcast that puts vintage design stories back into circulation. Our stories rediscover meaningful objects made in the past, pieces that can inspire us to recover vintage design and bring a personal mark within the contemporary home, while helping circular economy. Today, we find out a little bit more about Irish designer Eileen Gray and her unusual, non-conformist armchair. The story of a piece of furniture can be inevitably interlaced with its designer's life. A piece can usually be the result of feelings and experiences, and often it tells stories and curious anecdotes. The piece featured in this podcast has, even in its name, a sign of its maker's personality and what amazing and sometimes painful experiences and battles she went through in her long life. It is an armchair and it is called the Nonconformist Armchair. It was designed in 1926 by Irish designer Eileen Gray, a pioneer of contemporary taste which, for many decades, especially during the 60s, 70s and 80s, was neglected and almost forgotten. Then, in 2009, the collection of fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent went for sale in an auction at Christie's and one of Gray's armchairs set a phenomenal record. Today, Eileen Gray is regarded as a seminal figure in the history of 20th century design. Try to look at a picture of one of her interiors and it'll feel like it's from a current magazine editorial. To understand why she is regarded as one of the greatest innovators of all time, let's go back to her non-conformist armchair, which strikingly features only one arm, because Eiling's feeling was that one could be freer to sit at a different angle according to how she or he felt more comfortable. The armchair is a combination of leather for the seat and the arm, and a metal structure made of tubular steel. If we had to pick an innovative material for each decade, tubular steel is definitely an avant-garde material of the 20s. Both lightweight and strong, it had been employed by Hungarian designer Marcel Breuer, who designed the first tubular steel furniture in 1925, for the Bauhaus School. Eileen Gray's tubular steel pieces are nowadays icons, so much that it is somehow strange to imagine that Gray was almost ignored for so long. There is a fact that makes the nonconformist armchair so unique and emblematic. This armchair is deeply connected with the history of modernism, a movement that had its boom from the middle 20s to the early 30s. But that's not all. In fact, Eileen placed her nonconformist armchair in the bedroom of one of the most interesting modernist houses of all times, a place where her destiny and the one of Swiss architect Le Corbusier interwined and inevitably collided. This was a villa on the French Riviera, where Gray and Le Corbusier met several times and developed a great admiration for one another but they also became true rivals and much of their rivalry story happened in this house and because of this house. As the armchair, the house was made also in 1926 and Eileen called it E1027, where E stands for Eileen and the numbers refer to the alphabetical order of Eileen and Jeanne, the name of her partner of that time. Jean Badovici, who was the editor of architecture magazine L'Architecture Vivante. Located on the hills of the French coast, around Roquebrune Cap Martin, the house had its private access to the sea, and it was the idyllic junction between the most famous artists and architects of that decade. Among the regulars of the villa were Jean Cocteau, Charlotte Perrien, and Fernand Leger, just to name a few. Le Corbusier was also a frequent visitor, but when Eileen left her partner Jean and the house, Corbusier 
almost took over the decoration of the house and started painting frescoes and murals on its walls so that his name was more and more connected to the place which had been instead conceived entirely by Eileen. Unfortunately, her work at the house was quickly forgotten and put into shadow. Luckily, after many years, after a succession of other owners and events, the house is today recognized as the first architectonical work by Eileen Gray, and it stands as a classic of modern architecture. It is even possible to visit it because restoration works went through, allowing the original furniture to be recreated and placed where it originally was. The non-conformist armchair fitted perfectly in what Eileen had conceived as a space governed by order and storage, with a hint of playfulness. The villa was small, but Eileen designed tailor-made fixed furniture for it in order to make the most of every centimetre. Tables, chairs and cupboards, everything was highly flexible. Things turned and bent according to the human body natural movements. And then there was her fascination with tubular steel furniture, shiny and austere at the same time. Still, with a touch of wit, like in the case of the non-conformist armchair with its unexpected asymmetrical appearance. So much that one could think of it as a symbol of Eileen's strong and ironic personality. To think about it, one really had to have a good percentage of non-conformism like her in order to be a female designer at the time. Eileen was born in a well-off and aristocratic family, but still, for her to be one of the first female students to be admitted at the Slade School of Fine Arts in London, and then to decide to move to Bohemian Paris becoming a star of the I Society House's decoration was not a common choice among girls of her age and background. It was instinct that accompanied her studies and research all along. Like she used to say, formulas are nothing, life is everything. Nowhere did we search for a line or a formula for its own sake. Everywhere we thought of the human being, his sensitivity and his needs. Thank you for listening to today's episode dedicated to Eileen Gray's non-conformist armchair designed in 1926. My name is Umberta Genta and this is the Intondos podcast. For more vintage design stories, don't miss our next podcast or visit intondo.com.